conceptual stuff. Jay sounded better than Jay. Things people talk Real about. Talk, I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I uh, hope everybody's having a great start to their week. Look, I'm not going to uh, consume a great deal of your time. I just want to drop in and talk about something that's kind of flowing around that I want to go ahead and address. <clears throat> so I'm going to get to it. Uh, first of all, look, let me get you to do something. Like the video, share the video. Like the video, share the video. Uh, hit that like button. Share that video with as many people as you want to hear what you're hearing. If it's something that moves you, like it and share it. Like it and share it. Also, don't forget to support the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project. Uh, the, par the, par the first paragraph in the description box is going to show you and tell you how you can support our work. Okay, this morning, uh, I shared a, a real simple... Um, let me see if I can find it. I shared a real simple uh, post uh, by Bishop Talbert Swan. Uh, you may have may not heard of him, but he has developed a pretty huge following on Twitter uh, where he has gone after anybody that has come sideways uh, as far as black community. He pulled, he pulled receipts on uh, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker. He's, I mean, he's gone so hard on Donald Trump that he's had his life threatened, uh, threats to burn down his church. Uh, he is def definitely not your typical clergyman. He calls things as they are. He talks about practical and applicable solutions. Uh, he's one of those people that I have followed and uh, I can say that I agree with, agree with a large majority of the things that he posts. Uh, he's unapologetic and addressing issues. He is not being moved one way or another by some type of political agenda. He is unapologetically black. If you want to check him out, look him up, Bish, Bishop Talbot, Talbert Swan. Uh, the reason I'm here is because I posted something that he uh, he shared on Twitter and it simply says stop acting like black people were living in a utopia before Trump under Democrats black had the highest unemployment rate went to the worst schools were murdered on the streets by law enforcement dealt with dealt with a racist criminal justice system were mass incarcerated and then he ends the tweet with stop it and I shared it and what I did is I shared it without um, elaborating on it. I didn't offer any commentary. I didn't try to bring some elucidation to what he said. I specifically and purposely shared it with no collaboration because I want to prove a point that black people were going to get into their feelings, were going to get emotional and immediately respond without paying attention to what was being said. Something that we consistently do. Now, I posted a video if it wasn't yesterday, it was day before yesterday, and it says we have to we have to be careful. No, I think it just said, don't allow our hatred for Trump to blind us. And I think that is is that happens way too often because we have this undeniable, unshaken hatred for Trump. Anybody that is on the other side of the line from him gets a pass. Anybody from the other line for him automatically looks good to us. Because we hate him so much that we treat him as the, the standard of how we're going to move and we're going to operate. We don't pull receipts. We don't check records. We don't look at history. We'll just simply anything to do something bad to this dude, get rid of this dude. He's got to get out of that. And we don't realize that because this guy is not a career politician, because he is, quote, unquote, a business person, he doesn't have a political background. So anything he's done politically has happened since he became president. So that's three years. But almost everybody that's being pitted against him has a long history as a politician. And you can trace that history to see how they represented 
uh, black people or not represented black people, how they dealt with and engaged black people, and and not and what Bishop uh, Bishop Swan said is real simple and it's unrefutable that we have not experienced gains under any president not Democrat, not Republican, and there are times that we can look at some of our greatest uh, defeats, the, the, the crime bill of the early 90s, that came under Clinton. Um, the the uh, socialist bills that were implemented in the mid-60s that disrupted the black family and so much more that I've spoken on, I've shared on, I've written on, and so much more happened under the Johnson administration. The order to hit, if you haven't paid attention, check this out. The, the, if you haven't paid attention to uh, what's what's going on, a lot of stuff has come out of that, that Johnson administration that's crazy. Look up the uh, 1999 court case, uh, King versus the US, United States government, uh, based on the premise that the U.S. government was complicit in the murdering of Dr. Martin Luther King and look at the outcome. The U.S. government was found guilt, not only complicit, but guilty. It came out in the court case. I watched the videos. I've shared the videos. I put them on my site. It came out that the U.S. government hired a freaking hitman that they had on the, uh, that the U.S., uh, I guess U.S. attorney or Department of Justice, uh, a gang, uh, a gangster in New Orleans, uh, a mobster in New Orleans. They had him, basic. I guess he was some kind of informant or something on their program. But they had their thumb on him. They used him and his connections. He actually contacted a uh, hitman out of Houston. This isn't me talking about some conspiracy theory. This isn't me talking about some conjecture. This came out as facts in the court case. I saw it with my own eyes on video that this man hired a hitman out of Houston to take out Martin Luther King. It wasn't no uh, James Earl Ray. It was a hitman out of Houston. What was even more uh, mind-blowing to me is that the U.S. government had scrambled a U.S. Army Special Forces unit to finish the job if the hitman fell, failed. This is how serious they were that once Martin Luther King had turned away from integration and living harmoniously amongst one another and start talking about cutting the check, started to talk about reparations, started to talk about economic access. He was taken out in less than a year. So th 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 these are things that happened. It, it doesn't matter. I tell people all the time, we arguing about the right wing and the, and the left wing, the, the Republicans and the Democrats, and don't realize that these two wings belong to the same bird. And this bird has been shitting on black people since we got here. Nothing has changed. We have not grown since all of the uh, civil rights legislature was passed in the 60s. Not, we haven't grown an inch in home ownership. The wealth gap is actually widening. Mass incarceration is worsening. Almost every category in the socioeconomic sphere has us in last place. And we're acting like all this shit started when Trump got in office. Don't get me wrong. I don't have nothing good to say about dude. I'm aware of some of the things he's done. I'm aware of a bunch of the bad stuff he's done. And I'm aware of that with every freaking president that I've studied. None of them have done anything specifically in any grand way to put black people in a position to where we can start to move fluently in the in our, our socioeconomic environment. None of them. Absolutely none. Some of them played to us. Some of them made us feel like we were special. Some of we we before Barack Obama came along, we were talking about Bill Clinton being the first black president because this clown played a saxophone and smoked weed. The stuff we do emotionally to feel uh that like we belong, the stuff we do emotionally to have some form of vicarious connectivity to something uh, that resembles power always puts us at a disadvantage because we're not looking at the facts. We're not developing strategies, agendas, and, 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 and focus point, focal points on things that actually will move us. We're sitting around and basing our entire lifestyles on the perceptions of other people who are moving in, in, in total disregard to us, if you want to be honest, they shoot us a bunch of lines. 
the Democrats play to our emotions. They pay to our sympathies. They play to a bunch of other things, and we buy into they understand us. If they understood us, we would have way more progress than we have now. Now, uh, because, and the reason I could share Bishop Swan's uh, post without giving it any explanation is because I followed him for so long, and I know that he has gone like rat bat hard on Trump. He has not given Trump a pass. He has taken shots at directly at Trump's posts. And he has gotten all kind of hate mail for calling this this dude out. So he's not a Trump sympathist. He you know, he doesn't have any he's not a Trump apologist, let me put it that way. He's not somebody that's trying to prop Trump up. He's simply saying don't get caught up in your hatred. Same thing I said the other day. So your hatred for Trump so much that you allow these clowns on the other side to okey doke you once again. It's that simple. That's what he is simply saying. Don't let these clowns run game and talk you into something when they haven't given you and shown you one agenda. Everybody on the Democrat, when you look at the Democrats that were running for president, and if you look at Biden right now, who looks to be a shoe in, which is crazy when you look at this guy's current mental state. Forget his history of racism, because it's there. This guy co-authored the bill that started hurting black men into uh, prisons. But look at his state of mind now. This dude is borderline dementia. And we're going to literally endorse this cat because... We think he can get Trump out. The truth, if you want to know the truth, he can't get Trump out. The Democrats, as they stand right now, are doing everything they can, including politicizing the COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic as a means and a way of trying to uh, use our hatred for Trump as a way of building momentum for them. Instead of saying, this is what we're running on, this is what we're going to do for the black community, this is what we're going to do in the way of reparations, this is what we're going to do in the way of community uh, uh, restoration and, and, and academics and, 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 and uh, prison injustice reform and all this stuff. They're simply saying, we're not that dude. We're not Trump. Help us get Trump out. And they're going to use our hatred to try to build that momentum. We need to have something of significance. That's the only thing we're saying with that post is we need to have something of significance. We're not buying into that whole, man, Trump came along and messed it up for blacks. Man, it was messed up for blacks before Trump got here. And that's the only thing that Bishop Swan was saying. So on that note, I'm going to check out of here. I just wanted to drop by and drop that on you. On, this note, on that note, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget, hit that like button and share it and show your support for the work we're doing on all fronts at the Odyssey Project. Much love. I'm out. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Conceptual, uh, sounded better than Jay. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots.